Hey, hey, gang. I'm here with Mr. Gutso. Talk a little bit about acid reflux today because most of you guys know I'm not a doctor. I'm not offering any kind of medical advice, but I wanted to talk about a question that I got today about acid reflux and, and weight gain. So a lot of these digestive symptoms like acid reflux are so common that everybody just feels like, well, everybody's bloated. We all talk about it every day. What, what's the big deal? But a lot of these digestive symptoms are signals that there's things going wrong with your digestive system, that that, that that digestion is not working optimally. And if we can learn how to listen to those symptoms, then we can make some changes and adjustments that can improve a whole lot more than just those digestive symptoms, so to speak. So first of all, let me explain a little bit about acid reflux here on Mr. Gutso. Because what happens is when Mr. Gutso eats something, it goes in here, and then it goes down the esophagus into the stomach. And what happens is right here, there's what's called an LES, or a lower esophageal sphincter. And its job is when the food comes in here and starts to acidify, the LES closes so that that food doesn't come back up and have us screaming all kinds of cuss words all day long. So the LES is what protects us from having reflux, from having that heartburn, from having all of that agony. The trick is that this LES valve is triggered by stomach acid. So what happens is when we don't have enough stomach acid to trigger that valve to close, then the food comes back up. And the small amount of acid that we did have in there that is mixed with the food really burns us and it's completely miserable and, and we hate everybody and just want to punch people in the neck all day long. It's not a fun thing to have going on, I understand. So what's going on though is it's not an issue of too much acid like we're told uh, it's an issue of not enough acid to trigger this valve to close like it's supposed to and then we don't get reflux anymore so the problem is that it's not that this process of feeling reflux is necessarily causing any kind of weight gain or fat storage or any problem like that but there's quite a few issues because if you don't have enough acid to trigger this valve to close correctly, then you also don't have enough acid to break your food down properly. And the body can't use a peanut butter sandwich for anything. A peanut butter sandwich has no value to the body. The body finds value when that peanut butter sandwich is broken down into proteins that are broken down into amino acids and, and minerals and vitamins. Those are all the nutrients that the body can use. So if you don't have enough stomach acid in there to break the food down properly, your body's not getting the nutrients that it truly needs. And when your body's not getting what it needs, that can be a major cause for cravings. Those cravings are just your body saying, hey, I, I need stuff. You might be putting stuff in here, but I'm not getting any of it at the cellular level. Give me more stuff. So that can be a big cause for cravings and those cravings when we give into those because there's no willpower that's going to fight your way through real cravings when the body needs something it's not getting. So when we give into those cravings, and it's usually junk that we're eating and ho-hos and potato chips, when we give into those, that can cause a lot of weight gain issues. Uh, another problem is that when the food that we take in is not being broken down properly, it breaks down by the process of rotting and fermenting. And that rotting and fermenting creates gases and toxins and all this junk that now becomes a burden to the body. So instead of you thinking that you're nourishing your body, you're really just giving your body more of a problem if you're not digesting that food correctly. That's not fun. You don't want that. You don't want to try to go through all this effort of eating right. And I, I just went over to the other side of town to buy a organic, all natural, bathed by the love of God's food, if you can't digest it, you just wasted all that time and effort because now it's going to turn into this toxic mess. So what the body does when there's more toxic junk than it can deal with properly, it'll start pushing some of this junk out of the system any way it can, but if it's overwhelmed, it'll start storing some of this junk in fat cells. So that's when we start to expand like the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. And it's not always just about the amount of calories or fats or carbs or whatever that we're eating. Sometimes it's about the toxic load of the body. So with all the toxins that are available to us in this land that we live in so joyously, 
uh, we don't want our food to be one of those toxins. So the ability to break the food down properly is a big deal when it comes to that. So in that way, this acid reflux that's telling you, hey, you're not really digesting stuff really that great, that's a sign that says, hey, this could be causing a lot of other trouble like weight gain. What's up, favorite? How you doing? So there's a lot of other things to think about too. That same situation where you were having cravings because you weren't getting any nutrients out of the food that you were getting, that not only can create those cravings, but it can also create a stress to the body because the body needs nutrients to run all of these things that it does. So if it's not getting the nutrients from the food that you're sending in there, that's a stress to the body. I think about trying to pay $800 worth of bills with 12 bucks. It kind of stresses you out a little bit. That's what happens to the body when it's not getting the resources it needs. And when that's the case, it'll jack up like cortisol and other kind of stress hormones to try and make everything function correctly. And a lot of times, a lot of people believe those stress hormones can kind of uh, send signals to the body to store more fat. So you can see there's a variety of ways that it's not really the acid reflux is causing weight gain, but the underlying issue, not enough stomach acid, that's creating those reflux symptoms, those underlying causes could be creating weight gain for you. Now, it could create other problems for different people. Everybody's going to experience this differently. Some toxins could be scored, stored in tissues and cause other kind of problems or joints and cause pain and stuff like that. So the main gist is it, of it is if you're experiencing these digestive symptoms, and I'll try to go over some of the other symptoms this week too in other videos and explain how those may lead to weight gain as well. But if you're experiencing this, these symptoms and you're having a hard time losing weight, this could be part of your puzzle. This could be part of the situation that's, that's making it harder for you. Okay, so monkey boy, what do I do if I have reflux? How do I fix that? And the short answer, because the answer is a little bit complicated, I won't be able to cover everything in this video and there are some important topics that you really want to understand. But the basis of it is the, the solutions that most people use is they either use some kind of natural remedy or maybe they use baking soda or something like that, or they take a medication that either neutralizes stomach acid or it turns it off completely. Um, and what that does is they, oh, I don't feel the reflux. I fixed it. That was amazing. I fixed it. I'm awesome. But the problem is, is that you just turned off your ability to feel that reflux. That doesn't mean that it's not still going on and that the Digestive, in your, digestive enzymes in your stomach are still coming up and can cause damage in a similar manner that, that acid can. Of course, acid is worse, but you didn't really fix the problem of not having proper digestion. You just removed the ability to feel that symptom. So what we like to see people do is to fix the actual problem. And the way that people have a lot of success doing this is by adding more stomach acid. And then once this stomach becomes acidic enough, to trigger this LES valve to close, then it closes when food is in there. It doesn't come back up and burn us, and we get to digest it. Woo! You want to digest it. So that's kind of a big deal. Now, uh, to understand how to do this, because there's some important steps of when you would want to take HCL, the type of dose that a person would want to take, and, and some steps like that, because if you do the wrong way, you might have more, you know, more severe reflux, because maybe you're adding more acid, but not enough to trigger this valve to close. And so what I have is you can listen to our free uh, Kick It Naturally podcast episode on acid reflux. And we go over this in, in a lot more detail and kind of walk through some of the steps. And that'll help a lot. And also I have a, a, a free digestion assessment guide that'll kind of walk you through some of these things and some of the other digestive symptoms that you might be dealing with. And we'll let you know you know, what kind of trouble could these symptoms really be creating and what's actually causing these symptoms? I, I kind of always thought that, oh, well, my mom had that symptom, so I get to have that symptom too. That's just how it is. But it, it doesn't have, have to be that way. Um, you, can die, you can download that free guide at kickitnaturally.com forward slash digest. I'll put that in the comments after I'm, I'm done chatting it up real nice. Um, but you can go there and you can download that for free. And at the bottom of that guide, there's also the link right to the, the Kick It Naturally podcast about acid reflux. So you can, you can listen to that and really 
hear more details about, okay, what are the steps that I could take? Because there's a variety of steps that people use out there and a lot of them are successful. It just depends on the, the severity of your issue and how severe is the cause that's creating the lack of, of stomach acid. That can kind of depend on the steps that you really need to do to, to make it all happen. So I'll try to cover some of these other symptoms in other videos this week, but if you get questions, uh, you can post them below and uh, me and Mr. Gutso will we'll get back to you and let you know what's going on. But we'll see you soon. Acid reflux off.